serenity now, 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 serenity now. Yo, dude, you do realize that doesn't work. Oh, what does? Try Hoochie Mama. Hoochie Mama! Hello, and welcome to another episode of Specialist of the Strange. My name is Dakota Franson, and tonight, for this episode of Dakota's Declassified, we are going to do things a little different. A listener just like you, sent in the request to cover meditation. I thought it was a good show topic, as it is also a common practice. It is utilized in many spiritual practices to help aid our own journey a great across the divine the concept of it's existed for thousands of years and it has even been shown to prove some sort of medical benefits so tonight we are going to discuss 
a standard operating procedure in meditation. What it actually is, how everything actually works, whether or not there's true spiritual connections, and much more. Like I said before, I am your host, Dakota Franson. I urge you to sit back, relax, simply breathe, and enjoy the show. Hey everyone, Dakota Franson here, Specialist of the Strange. I just wanted to come with you real quick about potentially doing your own podcast. Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? Maybe you got a lot of questions like, how do I record? How do I get my show into all these apps that are out there? How can I make money? There are probably several thousand, thousand, thousand other questions about getting this show off the ground that you have been formulating and communicating in your mind. And I'm here to tell you that there is a very simple answer to this. Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, distributing your show. And best of all, it is 100% free. Get all the perks from the other guys without having to pay for subscription fees. And best of all, it is easy. And in fact, Anchor can match you up with sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast right now, which means you can get Paid doing what you love. Isn't that the fucking dream, my friends? In fact, that's actually what I'm trying to do right now. By reading this ad for you. It is amazing. It helps ease the process for guests. Putting on music. Whatever you want to do. So if you want to start your podcast. Make some money doing it. Go to Anchor.fm slash start to join me and several other fabulous people already using Anchor. That's Anchor.fm slash start. And I cannot wait to hear you on the air. Man, that was cheesy. Um, all right, so begin off with this episode, we are going to need to discuss what meditation is. Well, before we go into that, I just want to announce something real quick. Those of you who are interested in potentially looking into one of my books, you can get some insight. No, what am I trying to say? Tomorrow is going to be a day that you're going to want to pay attention to. Pending there's no technical difficulties. Tomorrow, a cinematic trailer of sorts for my new book, Dear Coda, The Letters You Wish You Had, is going to drop. There is going to be a live premiere event on my YouTube channel. You can come in, we can chat, you can ask some questions. Doesn't necessarily have to be about the book, but... Should be a fun time, so be sure to check in tomorrow. And also like, subscribe, and click on that little bell. And also, because YouTube's being very sneaky about this, click on the bell and hit all notifications if you want to get updates to all my new uploads. YouTube's being very sneaky about that type of thing. So, back to the show. I guess we should start on... The basics. What is meditation? Now, if you're like me, when you hear the word meditation, you're thinking 
Well, you're sitting down somewhere, legs crossed, eyes closed, trying not to fall asleep. Maybe you do like a little hum or you light some maybe you light some candles. Maybe with a little nice little music or nature sounds that uh, honestly make you want to pee a little bit. <laughs> And oftentimes you probably would associate this with Buddhist and Hindu culture. You wouldn't be far off. However, you don't necessarily need incense, candles, to sit down in a funky position, or do any sort of chanting. Like I mentioned before on previous episodes, anytime you have some sort of practice or ritualized practice whether it's communicating with spirits involved much of witchcraft things like that the ritualistic manners merely help you get into the right center of mind they get you into the right set of mind set of emotion It really, all you need to really do for meditation is uh, <laughs> try to find some place quiet, take deep breaths for five minutes, that qualifies too. Preferably somewhere comfortable, and it's, it gets to be a little easier for you to drown out any background noise, but nevertheless, all of these practices commonly associated with meditation you don't necessarily need them. If you want, you can add them. And it might actually help you get into the mood a bit. But the fact of the matter is, meditation is simply a ways for you to calm your mind. And this has actually been known for thousands of years. In fact, I got my notes here real quick. Let's see here. I see, like I said, if uh, you've heard that meditation comes out of Hindu and Buddhist cultures, you would be right. It is widely believed that the practice originated in India, then eventually spread out through the rest of the world through... Uh, Trade routes, where goods and services, where goods were traded between countries. It's not only goods that they would trade, but they would also trade practices. Now they say that the earliest documented records that mention meditation is a ritual tradition a Hindu tradition, I should say, called Vedantism. I pr Vedantism, I think it's pronounced it. Don't sue me <laughs> if I got that wrong. The earliest practices that were documented are dated around 1500 B BCE. However, a lot of people assume that or believe that meditation was practiced way longer than that, going as far that back as 3000 BCE. Because the practice has been around for so long, it's hard to trace back exactly what beliefs started up where. In fact, they say part of the like I said, mentioned before, so part of the spread of meditation practices was through trade routes. Silk Road is a particular popular one. It eventually gone through uh, Hindu Buddhist cultures. There was a time when 
Taoist China Tao religion. I'm sorry, I'm getting scatterbrained here. Can't get a f enough fucking focus. God, I need a new studio. First we see meditation pop up in India, then we see it pop up in Japan, China, then it spread to Western cultures via the Silk Road to where it would start to influence Judeo-Christian faiths. They say it's by the time of the 3rd century AD meditation practices were solely integrated within Krishna faith. The term meditate actually comes from a Latin word. Medi I'm pretty sure it's pronounced mediatum, which roughly translated means to ponder. Which, like I said, meditation, near all it really does for the mind is help clear out the background noise that helps it make it hard to focus it is also believe that a lot of uh, cultures integrated <coughs> meditation beliefs as uh, ways to understand salvation and morality Help improve concentration, knowledge, and liberation. Essentially, all building the foundations for a spiritual life. If you practice yoga and meditation today, you can achieve a lot of the same benefits that people back in earliest of antiquities and any culture really experience for themselves. However, the benefits that a lot of spiritual cultures attribute to meditation could not be achieved through simple one session. It was through ah, leave me alone. Maybe I need to start focusing a bit more. It was through regular practice of meditation that People started to notice these benefits. A lot of cultures they attributed to the feeling of being closer, you know, to nirvana, spiritual enlightenment, inner peace, things like that. So, what is it that gave? our ancestors the impression that these things were taking place? Well, the short answer is regular meditation practice paired with yoga, I should add, simply help them feel better on quite a few things. Nowadays, meditation has been it's slowly integrated into holistic health practices. Uh, in fact, I do believe that they found that people who are going through cancer treatments or pretty much any several forms of illness out there, if they integrated meditation and yoga and even prayer, for that matter, They have found that there's a significant in there's a significant change in their health for the better. It helped them get over their problems quicker. In fact, uh, right here I have a quick list of known health benefits. Uh, there's a stress reduction. There's helps with the anxiety. Promotes emotional health. Well, obviously, because if you're not as stressed out and you're not anxious, you're probably going to feel a little better and better emotionally. It's been known to enhance self-awareness. It 
it helps lengthen your attention span it may it helps reduce memory loss due to age it can help generate kindness uh, it can help fight addictions improve sleep patterns helps control pain it can decrease blood pressure Those are some of the, a lot of the top ones that are directly attributed to meditation. Now, how does this all work? How does this work into spiritual practices? Well, it is no secret. It is not up for discussion, not up for debate. That the secrets behind the universe, behind creation, behind well-being, behind main some sort of health is simply some form of balance. Everything in the I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I just received an Amber Alert in the mountain home Idaho Idaho area plate attached to it is a 2004 silver Ford Explorer one Adam two four three G G as in Greg D as in dog I'm looking at the information right now Ah, crap. Hold on. Hold on for just one moment. Alright, screw postponing the release of this episode. We have an active Amber Alert within the state of Idaho region. I just received the information. I paused the recording in order to look it up. The, the victim is 16-year-old Bertona Tony Ann McFadden. 16 years of age. She's female, white female, brown hair, brown eyes, about 5 feet tall, 140 pounds. Identifying features, Retuna is del developmentally delayed. She requires occasional wheelchair use. She wears a brace with purple skull skulls on her left leg from the knee down. Last seen wearing black jeans and a pink shirt. We have an abducted 16-year-old child out of Mountain Home, Idaho. Current suspect is Eric Javier. Miramontes Anaya, 24 years of age, Hispanic male, brown hair, brown eyes, 6 feet tall, 175 pounds, unknown identified, identifying features, unknown clothing, drives a silver 2004 Ford Explorer, license plate, 1, Adam, 2, 4, 3, Greg, Darla, from the state of Idaho, no known direction of travel... <laughs> Information is about to be released. They believe Miramontes Anaya lured the 16-year-old out of her home through online chat. As I said, we need to get this young lady found. She is requires occasional use of a wheelchair. She was, which was left at her residence. She has no phone or other means of communication with her. So please be on the lookout if you're in my area. Sorry, but they... You know what? Fuck it. I'm not sorry for that interruption. I didn't cause it. And I'm sorry. But... The safety of a child is much more important than this show altogether. So, guess what? Because we need to get that news to out as to many outlets as possible, this episode's going to be released early instead of this Wednesday. Yay! So within the hour of recording this, this should pop up on my YouTube channel. Please do give it a listen. I know it's going to be early. 
but there was a warning that dates and times are subject to change due to these circumstances. Now, back to the show. Before the interruption, I was going into detail about how meditation can actually help bring about several health benefits. And it's been well documented that these take place within mainstream science. Why does it do it? Is because our our bodies, the world around us, everything from our relationships to the very atoms within the building blocks of the very cosmos we exist in, to the very building blocks of the multiverse. Because yes, there is a multiverse. It all requires balance in order to sustain itself. And they say that if humans had the potential to keep themselves, keep their bodies in a balanced enough state for long enough, our own lifespan, we could go, we could extend our natural lifespan up to 200 years. That's some of the estimates that are out there. And when, in most cases, when is our body within that state of homeostasis? I remember correctly. It's when we're in a deep sleep. Nothing's disturbing us. There's no real stress from our day-to-day -day lives affecting our sleep pattern. Just regular old sleep. Like we would when, when we were kids. And the only thing we ever had to really worry about was whether or not mommy or daddy was gonna make the nasty vegetables for dinner again. If only it was that easy, right? But there's the problem. Nothing's ever gonna get done if everybody's just think sleeping all day so what's the next best thing meditation meditation can help us achieve that balance without intentionally falling asleep but how does it apply to the supernatural well it applies for a few things from an investigative point of view Sitting back, clearing your mind, and focusing on a certain case that you're working on. It can help get rid of the background noise. I swear, I ain't got to hit my own place. Anyway, as I was saying, strictly from an investigator point of view, if you're looking into certain situations, and you're just trying to figure out what the hell's going on sometimes... Focusing on that alone, if you decided to take a meditation, focusing on that idea alone can help free up your mind so you can try to come up with more creative, more effective solutions. And when you really think about it, it can also be applied to when you're having relationship problems, Uh, problems with work, schooling, whatever your situation may be. From for those who are those who possess psychic ability, it gets to be a little more complicated. No, there is not some sort of absorption of energy that powers your abilities. No. Being able to utilize meditation within psychic practice can help boost your abilities a bit. It's through regular practice. However, it's not likely that 
is going to solve everything. You're still going to have to exercise those muscles. Several sensitives utilize meditation when for some reason they can't get a good read. Because again, what it does is clear your head. Now if you want to try to utilize crystals or incense to put yourself in the mood, yeah. You can use that stuff as a way to boost your signal, so to speak. The science behind how crystals work in spiritual practices, that can be made into a whole new episode, my friends. Unfortunately, this type of answer also leads to a lot of people using it as a one-size-fits-all. Nor, in my own experience, the only times when meditation has allowed for some sort of spiritual awakening a psychic awakening which in reality can end up being like a second form of puberty for some people the only times I've ever seen it awaken any sort of abilities is that if only if the seeds were already there perhaps it was uh, genetic Perhaps uh, on occasion there have been some near-death experiences that awaken psychic ability, which therefore adds to the ideas I've mentioned before, that those who possess psychic ability, or at least the effective ones, those who are more in tune with the things that go bump in the night, having some sort of of connection with death. I think that's another process that I can be completely turned off. That That's another episode altogether. As far as gaining new abilities through meditation, possibly. But again, the process would make it a much easier if there is some sort of seed already present within the person. Now in some cases it requires a bit more practice though, but in some cases some people have actually been able to utilize meditative visualization processes in order to become experts at certain skills overnight. I have seen instances where people have walked me through processes that they're sort of rituals they've done to gain new insight, gain new Abilities. There's one gentleman who utilizes enough times to where he could play the guitar despite never having a guitar lesson or any musical di disposition. And what he did was that w during his trance like state, he essentially put together. How can I explain this? You know in movies where you see those big corporate meetings, you see all these fancy people in all these suits, all these corporate big wigs. You know what I'm talking about, right? Essentially what he did is he visualized himself as like the main CEO. He visualized himself in this room. And he would put in each chair a person that he respected, admired, 
and even loved in some cases. Now, it didn't have to be anybody he knew in his own personal life. He mentioned that a couple of figures that he invited, so to speak, were Gandhi and Lincoln. And it was through conversing with these people that he would somehow be able to unlock abilities. There have been situations where people have used this tactic, have picked up new languages they have never spoken before, had no ancestral lineage that they knew about, to the regions where that language was dominant, not ever having visited the region, no connection whatsoever. I've even seen individuals who utilized meditation practices, and you can see this within some Buddhist monks. Some individuals who utilize meditation, yoga, to cure cancer, to completely erase it from existence. Some stated that this was affected at the quantum level. And it could very well be, uh, which is the point I'm going to discuss here in a sec. There are people who I have seen completely gain control of the elements around them. If you happen to be a fan of the uh, Avatar Last Airbender series, yes, I'm talking about that type of shit. I have seen people who could summon storms on a whim. They could summon wind, rain, and even lightning. It was quite miraculous to see. Alright, see, where, where was I? Ah, uh, yes. Stormbringers. A lot of these gentlemen that I come, people that I've come across, I shouldn't say gentlemen because there are a few who are very wise ladies. These people that showed me their abilities, even were more than happy to show me how to, how to do it. In most cases, a lot of these gurus, I guess you can call them, will not be more than afraid to show off a bit and teach you how to do it for yourself because they realize that this sort of thing can help a lot of people if it's done right. So if you go to decide to look up meditation because you want to enhance your own abilities, you really need to do some digging on the people you're getting the information from first off because when it comes to every person like me who tries to genuinely share real information that tries to help people out whenever they can there's at least a hundred more who will definitely definitely scam you out of your money scam you out of your time your money and maybe even your own life in the more extreme cases. They're rare, but they happen. But if you just want to practice, start practicing meditation because you're stressing about school, what to do in a certain relationship that seems to be on the rocks, or even to try to find yourself a better career path because there are, are some people who teach that using meditation can adjust your um, quantum frequency and allow you to traverse between parallel realities. 
in order for you to achieve certain things. Yes, theoretically this is possible. But, being able to phase through different realities on a whim like that requires some practice. It's not, you just go, you slowly go from where you're sitting at right now to where you're leading the life to where you become the president of the United States. It doesn't necessarily work that easy. It doesn't make it seem like you can just pop anywhere. It's a bit more complex than that. Like I mentioned before, the universe itself requires balance in order to keep itself maintained. So, going on parallel realities, the closest dimensional planes, alternate versions of you, also have to be doing this. And it's likely you're replicating the same motions throughout multiple realities in this very moment. And there's a form of synchronization that happens. Because light has been known to do all sorts of funky things on the quantum level. And they could very well, and light particles could easily be traversing through different realities all the time. To where if we were able to get some sort of transportation that effectively mimics all of the qualities of photon particles, what light's made out of, we might be able to perfect time travel, multiverse travel. But the question is, what would you, would we be able to ever go and get home? Because at the same time, that light particle goes one way. Say you got a picture for visual visualization purposes. Say you got you, your bathroom mirror. Light particles have been known are said to take different paths of travel all simultaneously and therefore creating multiple re realities within that moment. Every choice we make creates a different reality. Some small, some big. How light moves also does this. Creates several branch realities on a very minuscule le level. And in order to maintain that balance, should a photon particle be able to traverse through one plane of existence and pop into another multiverse, another would take likely take its place and pop up in our own world and look exactly identical to where we would not be able to tell the difference because it moves so goddamn fast. So does meditation have qualities that can possibly give, get you to higher planes of existence? Yes, of course. But in re reality, it's a, how you define higher existences yourself. Is it comparable to uh, going from a peon entry-level employee to CEO of the company? Is it building up, get, starting off in a life in uh, most crime-ridden streets, and end up being the pre and then slowly becoming the very president of the country you live in that eradicates that crime completely? It all is based on our own choices and meditation. However you choose to use it as something, whether it's just a method to calm yourself down or if you want to try to utilize it in order to help better your own abilities, whether it's psychic or anything like that, it is effective simply because it helps eliminate the noise. And it's all based upon your own choices. So make sure you try to make the right ones. 
It may not always be easy, but you can affect lives in ways that you can't even imagine. And to kind of pair up with the uh, Amber Alert interruption that we got received earlier today, I want to focus that point on young children. While yes, it's perfectly fine if you want to share images of yourself, talk to other people online. You really got to do more to make sure you're making the right choices about who you involve yourself with. Because we become a mixture of the people we keep closest to us. It just happens. So make sure you make the right choices. Be kind to one another. If life hits you with something... Don't be afraid to take a few minutes to just sit back, breathe, lower your heart rate, and plan out your next move. There's nothing wrong with it. And it could be beneficial to you in ways that you may not even realize at the moment. So keep that in mind. That's it for today. Today is, what is today's date? June 30th. I hope you enjoyed this early episode of Dakota's Declassified. Only because of the Amber Alert notification that was received while recording. Because of this, I think I'll move up the uh, live premiere of the book trailer I mentioned at the beginning of this episode to Wednesday. Roughly 3 p.m. Mountain Time. I hope to see you all there. Feel free to give me a chat. If you like this episode, be sure to like, subscribe, share, help spread this channel around. Because uh, <laughs> social media is being kind of a bitch to us little guys. If you have an idea for a future episode, let me know. I'm be more than happy to cover it because uh, <laughs> I'm going to run out of ideas eventually. As for uh, the next episode, if no other surprise interruptions come up, be sure to tune in this Friday for an episode on the science of exorcism. Some of the findings I have might help rewrite the rules across several cultures on when an exorcism needs to take place. So be sure to listen in. I hope you all enjoy. I hope you all have a safe 4th of July. You know, stay sober. Don't be driving drunk. Be courteous to your neighbors who have had military service, be sure to make sure your pets are secure, and I will see you next time, my friends.